What I want to talk to you about this evening is something that um, confused me for a while um, because it's quite non-intuitive, I would say. And that is the fact that the, the determinant of a matrix A is equal to the determinant of the transpose of the matrix A. Because there's this, um, there's this uh, geometric interpretation of the, uh, of the determinant. Uh, where if we were to have a three by three uh, matrix, something like this, um, then what the determinant tells you is the volume of the parallel pipette spanned by these three column vectors. So if we were to turn these column vectors into row vectors, then why is it like uh, that the uh, if we were to take this and turn it that way, we're completely changing the entries of this column vector. So why would the volume stay the same? This doesn't make very much geometric sense to me. Um, but if you go back to the definition of the determinant, uh, well, not the definition, but um, maybe you could call it the cofactor formula of the determinant, this equation here. Let's see, that's uh, index j equals one to n, and the terms are, factors are a, i, j, times the cofactor, i, j. Uh, just something interesting I realized earlier today that this is called the cofactor, but the cofactor is, of course, the cofactor to a factor here, or the factor. There's you know, the factor and the cofactor, and that's why the naming exists as it is. Um, you can, of course, expand this out, something like this. J equals 1 to n for our n by n matrix. A I J to the minus one I plus J um, times the determinant of the minor I J. Um, something interesting I've noticed um, the book by Shibalev. Oh uh, boy. Um, the Russian author, book published by Dover Books, I forget his name, uh, he calls this whole thing the determinant, whereas Gilbert Strang just calls this guy here the determinant. Uh, sorry, the, the uh, Shibalev, or whatever his name is, calls this whole thing here the minor, but Gilbert Strang just calls this the minor. I, I prefer Strang's notation. Um, so if we were to do this by the, the for the two by two case, two by two case, this well this equation is well known. I'm not even going to write it out as um, as an expansion, a cofactor expansion. We just have a times d minus b times c. We notice on the, the not the principal diagonal here, but we'll call this the alternate diagonal, I guess is what you call it, maybe the anti-diagonal. Um, when we do the transpose operation, what we're really doing is we're rotating this guy here 180 degrees around the, um, the principal diagonal here so that the things, the elements on the anti-diagonal switch spots so that just equals so a to the transpose that's just going to equal to a d these guys stay the same here but these guys here switch b c excuse my horrible 
placement. And this is, of course, the same thing. AD minus, if we go in the same order, CB, but that's invariant under communication, commutation, yeah, commutation, um, like this. So it's the same thing. And this is sort of a pseudo -ge geometric argument as to why this transpose is the same as this transpose. And if we were to look at the 3x3 three three case, and we'll do this via cofactor expansion, 3x3, three three, then what we have here is something like, we'll just use, the tape, forget me, it'll take a second to fill this in, D, E, F, G, H, I. And if we were to expand this via cofactors, then we have our a times, uh, sorry, our minor here is going to be e h f i e h f i minus b times d g f i then plus three I have four sorry plus um, uh, C times uh, it's gonna be D E G H D E G H and as you can see here we're reduced down to two by two matrices, which are all symmetric around about the principal diagonal. Sorry, that doesn't make any sense. These all can be flipped about this. Uh, the, the determinant is symmetric about the principal diagonals. Maybe that's better terming terminology. I guess what I really mean to say is uh, if we were to flip this 180 degrees, if we were to take the transpose, the determinant's the same. Um, so, and if we were to have a 4x4 four four case, then we have some sort of, of sum of products uh, of something in a 3x3 three three matrix, but this all reduces down to something times the 2x2 two two case, so it will have something times a two by two matrix plus minus something times a two by two matrix so on and so forth so no so you can have a somewhat inductive argument and something that's not too rigorous just showing that uh, that shows that no matter how big our n value is how larger matrix matrix is because in the process of cofactor expansion we're ultimately reducing that this down to a two by two matrix and the fact that the two by two matrix is is has its determinant equal to its transpose, it thus follows that all matrices, when taking their determinant, equal their transpose. So that's what I want to say. So that's how I I remember this. Um, and you know. It, it doesn't make sense to me geometrically. I've thought about this and thought about this. I haven't gone through the trouble of actually trying to, you know, plug this into MATLAB and visualize this from the, uh, the volume of the, the parallel pipette interpretation. But if you think back to the determinant and its cofactor expansion formula here, in that way, I think it becomes a bit more clear as to why this property is true. So thank you for your time. And um, next time I want to talk a bit about um, the conversion of a infinitesimal volume into the uh, in Cartesian coordinates to that which can be expressed in a solid angle sort of formulation. I'll explain more about what I mean by that.